Hello, everyone. My name is Donna Chaco, and once again, I'm here together with Susan Riggs. Welcome, Susan. And we're here to present to you episode seven of Engaging with a Messy World. And uh, many of you know us already. Um, I am from Serenity and Health, serenityandhealth.com, and it's an organization I started to promote health of body, mind, and spirit. And Susan is uh, a good friend, a prior colleague, and a very wise lady whose website is rigsintegralcoaching.org. And she works on programs and coaching on similar topics as me. And you'll really get an idea about her expertise by the various topics that we have addressed so far in the first um, six episodes. And we've had some marvelous feedback. I mean, <clears throat> people have really benefited. It's very gratifying for us. So we're happy to be back at it again. Now, the topic today is integrity. And I really have always loved that word. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning more about integrity and what what it means for us in terms of how we can deal and improve and heal and grow with all the messiness around us. So with that, I turn it over to you, Susan. Thank you. Yeah, integrity is a very powerful concept. Um, and it can give us a lot of strength um, as we try to figure out what we what is ours to do? What can I do in the world? Um, it's much more than just doing the right thing, which is the first thing that comes to most people's minds when they hear about integrity. Um, so for this exploration, I'm drawing on the work of the Conscious Leadership Group and the Hendricks Institute, which explore this concept as a much broader idea than what we usually think about. So for a metaphor to get us started, I like to think of it as similar to structural integrity. My first career um, about 40 years ago was in civil engineering. And when you think of a bridge or an office building or any structure, if it's built right, it has structural integrity and it'll stand up even under uh, wind and waves and maybe earthquakes up to a point. Um, and if and all the parts work together, it's, it's well planned, well designed and everything works together. And if it's not well designed, it will fall down. It lacks integrity. So there is a that's a good analogy for our personal integrity. If everything, if we pay attention, if we're clear and intentional, um, then our processes have integrity, uh, personal integrity, um, clear, honest, authentic, purposeful. Um, this is easier said than done, but it's very worthwhile. Um, it gives us so much strength and, and it frees up a surprising amount of energy when we approach what we're doing with this sense of this, this big concept of integrity. It frees up energy. So let's break it down a bit. Uh, the Hendricks Institute talks about integrity as having four pillars. And the first of those is to take 100% responsibility. And that's something we spent a whole episode on, episode five. The second one is that, to speak. That, I just want to comment on that because I just think we can't emphasize that Ima, enough to take responsibility. You know, uh, we make choices and when the consequences don't turn out quite like we had hoped, if there's just such a tendency to find somebody else or something else to blame other than that, maybe we didn't make a wise choice. So I know we've already covered that, but I just wanted to add that little extra two cents because I think that's such a critical part of this whole package. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so the second pillar is to speak authentically, which is also known as candor. And that's a big topic, which we will address some other time. Um, the third one is to feel your feelings. We can't express integrity in our lives unless we're feeling the feelings that come up. And so we co covered that in episode two. It's also very important. And finally, uh, the fourth pillar is impeccable agreements. And that's what I want to spend most of our time on today. Um, it's used to me in a way of making and keeping agreements that really work. 
So I find this really powerful. Um, an agreement is anything that you have said you will do or something you will refrain from doing. And the agreement exists between two people, between you and someone else or between you and yourself. You, we, we make agreements with ourselves all the time. So it might be an agreement with your spouse that you will take out the trash today um, or an agreement with your spouse that you won't have a sexual relationship with anybody else as long as we are married. Um, it might be an agreement with your employer that you'll finish a certain project by a certain date or an agreement with yourself that you'll go to the gym three times a week. It can be small or huge. Um, so the fascinating thing about this pillar is that the Conscious Leadership Group talks about it in terms of energy. It's not about a moral right or wrong, although it has that aspect. But what makes it so powerful is that when we make and keep agreements with integrity, that lets our energy flow. Life energy flows well when we're working in integrity, and it doesn't when we're not. Yeah, um, that, that is really powerful. And it, when you told me about this for the first time, it um, rang a bell. And I... I told you before that I wanted to mention this book called The Four Agreements. It's written by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's a, a practical guide to personal freedom. Um, they have the four agreements. Their first one is it, that your word be impeccable. And they use the same thought about energy. In other words, if we're making false promises to ourselves or making agreements to do things we don't want to do or any number of things, we're, we're sapping our energy and we, we're not free. And it's when we're free that we have the most power. It's, it's fascinating, the overlaps. And um, we'll put this in the show notes as well as your references, Susan, because I, I would like people to know about this book. Yeah, that's great. There is a lot of wisdom in, in his writings. I love that. Um, and and what I love about the energy idea is that it takes us out of shame, shaming ourselves for our failures and just points us toward letting the energy flow. All right. So there are stages to making and keeping impeccable agreements, and we can practice making and keeping them by understanding the stages of the process. And the first one to me is is really powerful and extraordinary, and it involves making agreements that we can really commit to and that we actually intend to keep. And that conversely requires not making agreements that we're not actually committed to, that we're not going to keep. And one way to gauge this is by checking in with our bodies. There's this concept called the whole body yes. So when I am getting ready to agree to something with someone else or with myself, if I check in with my body and my body says, yes, this, this matters and I am committed to it, then I know I can make that agreement. If my body says, eh, I need to listen to that because making agreements that the body isn't happy with will tend to lead us to break the agreements. Right. And this yeah. is kind of mind blowing sometimes. Um, yeah, well, we talked about that, Susan. I mean, I, I had that a recent experience with a family member asked me to do something that I wanted to do. I felt like I should do. Uh, it was a good thing, but I didn't want to do it because of so many other reasons. It just, the timing wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. And you talk about this whole body reaction. That was the biggest whole body no that I can, but it was so hard. It took me at least a, a good half hour to even though it was pretty obvious, right, to sort that out. And then and then the freedom came once I sent the text and said, I'm really sorry, but da da da. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm lighter. <laughs> yeah. You felt an energy release. Exactly. Was, yeah. That was that's really cool. And learning to our listen to our bodies for that is is amazing. And of course, I want to note that this is uh, an expression of some degree of privilege. So if we are in a survival situation. We don't have a choice. We're in an abusive job or just we're in a refugee camp or just trying to survive from one day to the next. We do what we have to to survive. There's a whole body yes to that. Um, and and we don't 
you know, often people don't have the luxury of stopping to examine whether they want it. Um, but in any situation where we have some degree of choice, it's important to check in with the body. And that doesn't mean that all tasks are wonderful. Um, if I am getting up in the middle of the night to feed a baby, um, I may be exhausted and I may grumble a little bit, but the whole body, yes, comes from the bigger picture of that. I have agreed to take care of this baby whom I love with all my heart. And that takes me back many years, but um, <laughs> yes. yeah, it's not always the immediate task that, is, that we're super enthusiastic about, but the underlying commitment uh, is energetic and has integrity. All right, so that's um, that's the whole body yes part. And it's also important for us to be clear in these agreements that we're making, because if we say something vague, that's not going to be an impeccable agreement. An agreement needs to specify who is going to do what and within what time frame and with, with what parameters. So a vague agreement like, uh, yeah, I'll get to the trash. That's not an agreement. Yeah. I will take out the trash from the kitchen and the bathrooms this afternoon. That's a specific agreement. And this point is so huge, Susan, because we, we all have a tendency if we want to change or grow or make an improvement to sometimes be too vague, like, oh, well, I want to lose weight or I'm, I'm going to be a better listener or um, I'm going to eat more healthy or whatever. And those kind of goals don't work. Because like you said, if you're going to try and improve yourself or grow, you, you need something so specific and measurable to which you can hold yourself accountable on a, on a regular basis. Yes, exactly. And again, this helps us get away from shame. Because if I say I'm going to exercise more, but I haven't been specific and clear about it, then I'm open, opening myself up to fail and, and to feel shame around it. But if I can pick something specific that I have a whole body yes to, there's energy there. Yes, and pick something specific. And as you start off, doable and small and practical so that you have a high chance of, uh, of uh, succeeding because that's what spurs you on and gives you confidence to, to grow more. Exactly, exactly. And we are much more like, likely to have a whole body yes to something that is modest and doable as a starting point. Yes, very important. All right, so that's the first step, to have, have agreements that are clear and that we have a whole body yes to. Uh, the second step is pretty simple. We keep our agreements. And this is going to be, if we do it right, it'll be about 95% of the time that we'll be able to just keep the agreement and that keeps the energy flowing and it builds trust with other people and with ourselves. Um, so that's step two. Um, Step three comes if it's if it becomes difficult. So if there's something that it turns out I can't do or that I really am not willing to do after all, like I agreed to it and then realized my body's not saying yes to it, it's important to renegotiate. Step three is to renegotiate if we realize that we're not going to be able to do it. And that involves going to the other person or to yourself if it's an agreement with yourself and saying, I recognize that I agreed to do such and such. And I, I am not gonna be able to keep that agreement, I'm sorry. Um, I agreed to run this 10K race with you and I'm realizing I'm not up to it. My body's not up to it. I need to cancel that one. Or I need to, um, in some cases, it might be a modification of what I'm agreeing to or agreeing to part of it or agreeing to do it later. There are lots of ways to renegotiate, but recognizing as soon as we can and renegotiating before we fail. Right. It was a long way. Um, and then the fourth step is if we do fail, because once in a while that will happen, we're human and we get to be imperfect. And if we fail to keep an agreement, the impeccable agreements framework says we have to acknowledge it and we have to repair. So I might go to someone and say, I am so sorry. I, I promised that I would help you with this project and I didn't do it. Um, and yesterday went by and I didn't help you at all. And I'm really sorry. And I want to do what I can to, to repair this breach of trust. Um, 
we don't have time to go into a lot of details and examples on that, but it's important to note that this does not involve making excuses. I don't waste the other person's time by explaining why, all the reasons why it wasn't my fault <laughs> or, or why they should give me a pass. It's just, I acknowledge that I breached this agreement. There's a breach of integrity and it matters. And I, I want to repair that if I can. So that step four is really important in the case of something that I was not able to follow through on. Yeah, very wise. Um, so again, it's all about the energy flow. Um, acknowledging and repairing restores the blocked energy flow that happens when we fail. And all of this is a learning process. There's a, there's a learning curve to it that we can practice over and over, and sometimes we'll mess up then we, we, we learn and we make better agreements. Um, and as we get better at it, we find ourselves with fewer broken agreements, more agreements that matter and that we keep and follow through with. And that helps us do what we can in this messy world. Yeah, I think this is a great topic, Susan. Thank you so much. There's a couple of things that, that, that always strike me when we talk about this kind of thing. One is... Um, how easy it is to say yes to something you don't want to do and how we should be aware of what motivates us to to say those yeses. Is it f fear of being honest, fear of not being liked, fear of somebody uh, thinking we're lazy? Uh, you know, there's a lot of built-in motivations that we carry with us. And um, the more you... Uh, delve into this and ask yourself these questions, I think the better we're able to hopefully not quickly say yes, just because we think we have to. And this brings me to my favorite quote of the year, which I keep quoting, but uh, it would solve so many problems. This is the, the Victor uh, Frankl quote about the pause. And uh, I'm just going to read you the quote because I just love it. He says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and freedom. But the problem is a lot of times there's we don't take that space. The stimulus happens, we get asked, and this flood of emotions comes and we feel as we should, so we say yes. But mindfulness would, uh, and practice and repractice would allow us to kind of savor that pause and use that in so many circumstances would make the world less messy. And this is one of them for sure. Yeah. I imagine a world in which um, everybody around you trusts you, knowing that if you have said yes, you're really committed and right. trustworthy and you'll follow through. Right. Yeah. A very very good topic i i suspect the listeners are thinking of their own lives and whether they they may instantly know things that they have said yes to themselves broken promises to other people for, for not healthy reasons you know uh they reasons that were were not described with not done with integrity is what I'm trying to say. There's no good adjective there. But anyway, yeah. um, well, this is a really great topic. So for everyone listening, we'll have show notes and they will list the references in a brief summary and the link to the other programs, the first seven. Um, this program and all of them are available on my website uh, at at uh, serenityandhealth.com and on YouTube. And all those links are will be with the show notes as well. And, you know, if you find benefit to any of this, uh, please share it with your friends. Um, perhaps there's a, a, a group that you're part of that might find it a valuable uh, starter for discussion if you have a regular meeting or something like that. Um, so that's about it. Am I missing something? Once again, uh, serenityandhealth.com is me. And Susan is riggsintegralcoaching.org. 
And uh, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Susan, as always. Take care. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. <laughs>